Previously, we took a look at how we could decompose an A matrix into a lower and upper triangular matrix called the Lu matrix decomposition, and this was a or is a general form of a way to decompose a matrix into two other matrices. But there are many other matrix decompositions, and another matrix decomposition that we may want to do is we may want to decompose a matrix into three matrices. And that is going to be the topic of today's video. Howdy folks, welcome to this sixth episode in the computational linear algebra series, where we are going to discuss the LDV matrix decomposition. So the LDV matrix decomposition is a way to decompose a matrix into three matrices. And much like the LU decomposition, this is a very general form that we will find many uh, three matrix, uh, matrix decompositions to be in. For the LDV matrix decomposition, we have a lower triangular matrix, uh, denoted by L, uh, diagonal matrix, denoted by the variable D, and then an upper triangular matrix denoted by V. Now the reason why this upper triangular matrix V is uh, denoted V is because we don't want to get that confused with the U matrix from the Lu decomposition. Whereas with the L matrix, we can consider this L matrix right here the same matrix as the one that we would see from the Lu decomposition. Now the great thing about matrix decompositions is that we know that they are all just representations of the same matrix, meaning that the Lu decomposition equals the A matrix, and so does the LDV matrix decomposition. Now for both of these decompositions, we have the same L matrix, which is particularly convenient because we can use our prior knowledge of the Lu decomposition as well as any code we've written to perform or help perform the LDV matrix decomposition. This tells us that the U matrix or the upper triangular matrix must be equivalent to DV. Now I know what you might be asking. Can't we just make this diagonal matrix the identity matrix? And while we certainly could, and then this V matrix would be equivalent to our upper triangular matrix, that's not particularly useful. You're not going to see any specific applications of the LDV matrix decomposition in this video, but it is a very fundamental building block in many of the more advanced topics we're going to cover, and we see it all the time in machine learning applications, data compression applications, or even image processing applications. And one of the very important details of the LDV matrix decomposition is that this D matrix and its values be unique. We will discuss that in the future, but just bear that in mind that we want this to be, this D matrix in particular, to be unique. But this tells us something really, really nice and simple. V is equal to D inverse U. Now that's just some simple basic linear algebra right there. But why is that particularly useful? That comes in when we look at how we can actually perform the LDV matrix decomposition. Step one is we perform the Lu decomposition. That's because it gives us the L matrix already. We know that we can get the other two matrices from the U matrix and examine uh, the fact that U equals DV. Then we can take the diagonal values off of the U matrix and simply just slide them right into place into the D matrix. Something like this, where you can see all of our diagonal values right here are along the diagonal here in the D matrix. Then, since computing the inverse of a diagonal matrix is very, very straightforward. We can just perform V is equal to D inverse U or compute D inverse multiplied by U since we are getting U from the U 
decomposition and we're setting up D, we can just invert it and we can get our V matrix pretty simply and pretty easily. It's a simple four step process. So per usual, we're going to get into the code and all this of course can be found on my GitHub and GitLab pages. Here you're seeing an image of the GitHub repo and uh, just because I had a few concerns with navigating to things, we are going to be working in the number six LDV directory right here. You can see here's episodes five, four, three, two, and one. That's how this is structured. Inside of there, you will find the linalg python package we'll be using for the Python stuff, as well as here is our octave code and then our Python main script. So we're going to dive into this linalg directory, where inside we will find the linalg.py file that we'll be working on right here. Now this is quite a big file now since we're adding in a new function, but you'll see that I haven't changed anything with the loo decomposition function or the structured Gaussian elimination function. Both of those were episodes 5 and 4. So here you can see in line 42 I've defined a new function called LDV. We're passing in an A matrix. The first thing that we're doing per our steps we just established is calling the loo function to take advantage of the code we previously wrote. We're setting up our D matrix here, which I'm just using an identity matrix for, since we'll be replacing the values along the diagonal anyways. In lines 49 and 50, we are stripping the values off of the diagonal of the U matrix and placing them on the diagonal of the D matrix. And then, last but not least, we're computing... Uh, the inverse of D right here. I'm cheating a little bit by using the NumPy package, but uh, I didn't want to go into a whole, uh, you know, big uh, aside of how to do inversions computationally. So we're not going to deal with that. We're just going to cheat a little bit and use NumPy's Linalg package to invert that. Um, and then we are just computing D inverse U to get V. And then lastly, line 52, we're returning it all. Here in our ldv.py file, you can see we're doing the same general setup as before. We're generating a random 4x4 A matrix. Remember, we're still only considering square matrices. I'll let you know when we move to non-square matrices. You can see here in line 11, we are doing the LDV matrix decomposition. And then in line 19, we are performing a check. Here in the terminal, you can go ahead and pause the video right now if you want to check these values, but I seem to think that they're uh, looking pretty good between A and the check. And here you can see our lower triangular matrix, our diagonal matrix, and our uh, modified upper triangular matrix. Notice how we have unique values along the diagonal here of our diagonal matrix. And I want you to notice something really important here. Along the diagonals of our lower triangular matrix, remember how we have all ones. We have ones along there. Notice what this does to the upper triangular matrix. We have all ones along the diagonal of this matrix as well. This is a really, really important thing to notice for future episodes, and I just want to point that out. But this is very useful to have all of these unique values in the diagonal matrix. And again, when we start talking about uh, how linear algebra plays its role in machine learning or AI uh, data compression or image processing, this diagonal matrix is going to be incredibly important. And here's the octave code. Uh, we don't have all the same functions in there as before, so I've copied over a little bit from the Lou decomposition. You can see this is the LDV matrix decomposition function, and we're returning back LD and V. Uh, we're doing similar things here, except uh, now we're setting up this D matrix as well. You can see we have the same loops pretty much here to do the Lou decomposition. Then here in line 17, we're stripping the values uh, within the for loop here, just like with the Python code. And then uh, you can see a little bit more clearly here, straightforwardly here, that we're computing V by just doing D inverse by U. Then down here, we are generating a random 5x5 five five matrix, performing the LDV matrix decomposition, and then checking that all out. Let's take a look at the terminal. 
Uh, now yeah, I kind of split this up a little bit because the terminal with octave is a little bit bigger. Here is our generated A matrix and here is our check. Again, I will let you pause the video and check my work to make sure that that's all good. But just by doing some quick spot checks, everything looks good to me. Again, notice how we have unique values all along the diagonal of our diagonal matrix and that we have ones along the diagonal of our lower triangular matrix and our upper triangular matrix. Again, that will be a very important thing going forward that we're going to want to look at. Now, just to kind of conclude here a little bit, we've covered the LU and LDV matrix decompositions. And this is what I call the matrix decomposition tree, if you will, where there are variations of the LU and LDV matrix decompositions that are higher level decompositions. And we are going to go through and look at some of those higher level decompositions, as well as there will be other branches, for example, that are coming straight off of the A matrix. But there are a wide variety of matrix decompositions, and we are really going down the rabbit hole now of exploring all of them. I want to thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. If you found this video helpful, leave a like so that others can find this video easier. And if you want to see more content from me, whether it's math, applied math, astronomy, or astrophysics related, consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Adios.